In this video, I'm gonna show you how, just by using a simple app, you can get the most out of your Quest, supercharge it for maximum performance. So you can get a game that looks like this and make it look like this. Or go from a game looking like this to a game that looks like this. The screens I just showed you often using that app, and in this video, I'll take you through step by step just how it works and how well it optimizes your games. As always, if you liked today's video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed already, a subscribing would be a great way to support the channel. Now, let's check out this app. The Quest Games Optimizer is made for the original Quest, the Quest 2, and the Quest Pro, although in this video, I'm only testing it on the Quest 2. The Quest Games Optimizer does cost $5.99 US dollars, and there is a free way of increasing the graphics of your Quest 2 by using SideQuest. I'm using the desktop version of SideQuest here, so it might be a bit different for different versions, but I go into the device settings and tools. Now the Quest 2 has a default texture size of 2048, so choosing a texture size above that will give you a noticeable boost to the graphics. However, the Quest Games Optimizer, I think, is by far the much better tool compared to SideQuest. There's a lot more functionality, a lot more things you can play with. You can create individual optimization profiles for each game, and it also acts as an app launcher. So in my opinion, unless you're really strapped for cash, the Quest Games Optimizer is well worth the price and the way to go if looking to optimize the graphics and performance of your Quest 2. Let me start by showing you the Quest Games Optimizer. So we go into Unknown Sources and you can find it there once you've installed it. From here you enter in the email address that you use to purchase it. And there's a few steps here showing what you need to do to get it working properly. I'll go through some of those at the end of the video. But first I want to show you how it works. We have our game profiles here but before we go into those let me show you the general settings. You have this optimization toggle switch here. If you turn it off, that'll mean this will just act as a simple app launcher without the optimization features. So you probably wanna leave that on. There's also auto detection, and that's a really cool feature. It means that you don't have to launch your games through this optimization app each time. You can actually launch them from your games library like normal, and it will still apply the optimization profile to that game. Then there is shortcut, which turns the Quest Store icon into a shortcut for the Quest Games Optimizer. The only thing is that it will disable the link to the actual Quest Store. If we go into the main home screen, we can filter the games by all, and that shows all of the games that you own with pre-mode profiles automatically applied. Now, some of the games won't have any pre-mode profiles available, and that's because the Quest Games Optimizer has over 400 pre-made game profiles, but not every game will have a pre-made profile for it. So if we look at some of these pre-made profiles here, you can see some are made to either save battery with the battery icon, increase performance that you can see with the rocket icon, or render the best graphics as you can see the HD and HD plus icon. So depending on what you want to do with the game, you get to select a specific profile. And then you can optimize the game pretty much how you want. Now you might find that some games have a limited number of profiles or might not have any profiles associated with them at all. But not to worry in this case because you can make your own profile. If you go into edit, you've got a ton of different options from changing the resolution of the graphics to playing around with the screen refresh rate. You can also change the CPU and GPU separately from a power saving mode to an insane mode, depending on what you want. Or you can leave it as dynamic so it changes according to the demand. You can also do the same thing for the frame rate too, which goes from dynamic to very high. So as you can see, this is why the games optimizer is far superior to SideQuest because there's a lot more functionality here. So let me show you how one of these profiles looks in game. I'm gonna play Demio and I'm gonna launch it from the games library. Like I said, you don't have to go through the app if you enable the auto detection option in the settings. So the screen on the left has the HD plus profile applied. And if we pause a screenshot just here so you can better see the differences, you can see that Sorcerer is a lot clearer in the left hand screen as is the model itself. It's just a whole lot crispier. And again, another example here showing the Fireball spell card. You can read the text better and it's a whole lot less blurry on the left hand screen that's been enhanced by the optimizer compared to the right hand screen. But some games that require quite a bit of processing power like Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, you might not have much room for graphical improvement. And by that I mean you probably could improve the graphics but not without causing some performance issues. 
That is making the game run really slowly or stutter and lag to the point where it will affect the gameplay. So in the left hand screen you're seeing here has been enhanced with the HD profile, not HD plus, but HD. And the right hand screen is just Walking Dead Saints and Sinners without any profile applied at all. And it's not a huge amount of noticeable difference. But like I said, you can make your own profiles for these games, whether a profile exists for them or not. I thought, since I didn't see much difference with the HD profile with Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, I thought I'd make my own. So as you can see, here are the specs for the HD profile. With my own profile, I'm going to just max everything out. Now, I expect this to run like crap. But I just want to see how much of an improvement it makes with everything on maximum settings. GPU, CPU, resolution and frame rate all set to the maximum. And as you would expect, the game runs really slow and laggy. But you can see the difference here in the gun texture, for example. A lot sharper on the left when compared to the right. Or here with the zombies. The textures are just a whole lot crisper with the game's optimizer profile applied. Now, I wouldn't be able to play the game like this just because it is too laggy but I'll definitely go back and play with my personal profile to hit that sweet spot between performance and visuals. So next I'm gonna to try to make a more realistic and playable profile that balances both visuals and performance. And so here I am making my own personal profile for Doom 3. I'm bumping up the resolution to 145%, having the refresh rate at 68 hertz, leaving the CPU as dynamic, but increasing the GPU to insane, and the frame rate to very high. And if we jump into the game, I'm going to pause the screenshot right here. You compare the left hand side with my personal profile to the right hand side. You can see that the uh, textures on the man's face in particular are a lot crisper on the left when compared to the right. So it can make a difference even for those games that already look quite impressive on the Quest 2 like Doom 3. There's also something for content creators too, with the option to record videos in up to 2160p as well as increase the frame rate of the recording, capture format, and compression quality. You can get your recordings to look really, really good. Just be aware that by increasing the quality of your recording, you also increase the file size by quite a bit too. And if you're running the optimizer in combination with making a recording on the higher settings, you could run into some stuttering and lag issues. Here I've recorded Doom 3 with all the recording settings maxed out on the left video. On the right video, I've just recorded Doom 3 using the standard default recording settings. And the biggest difference I can see is the recording on the left that's been optimized seems to run a whole lot smoother than the recording on the right. There's a couple of other small things to be aware of with the Quest Games Optimizer. You can change the apps from a list format to a tile format depending on your preference. You can update Quest Games Optimizer from within Quest Games Optimizer itself. And when you create a profile that you think works really well for a game, you can send it to the developer and they might add it to the 400 plus profiles that are already on the list. The setup and installation instructions for Quest Games Optimizer is over on the web page here. There's five different ways to do it. I'm not going to go through each of those ways. I think it's outlined pretty clearly on that web page, which I'll link in the description below. But some important things for you to be aware of, the whole process requires you to make a developer account, sideload Quest Games Optimizer onto your Quest 2, disable Do Not Disturb mode from your headset, which is pretty easy to do. But, and here's the thing that's a bit of a drawback, is that you have to make sure you've enabled ADB wireless connection in order for Quest Games Optimizer to work. And every time you close down your headset, that needs to be re-enabled. There are ways around it. You can leave your headset on standby mode so that you're not turning it off and on every time and don't have to re-enable it each time. And you can do it via SideQuest using the app on your phone. So it can be quite easy to do. But I just wanted to mention that. And I would recommend checking out the installation instructions first, which I'll link in the description below, just to make sure you're happy with going through all of those steps before you purchase the Quest Games Optimizer. So there you go, there's a really handy app here that will help you get the most out of your Quest 2 games. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. If you have liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and your subscription would really help to support this channel so I can keep creating content like this for you in the future. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one.